Larry Junta, City Councilor. Bob Cronin, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Jared Eigerman, Ward 2. Bruce Vogel at large. Barry Connell, Lion Tamer. Allison Harkless, Ward 1. Larry Herza, go Red Sox. <laughs> Council President Tom O'Brien, Ward 6, and sometimes Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't get any shit. <laughs> he doesn't get any shit. Sometimes what? Drive. Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> Just a moment of silence, of silent reflection and thought for this uh, meeting tonight. Seems like we have a lot of interested citizens here, a lot of youth here to help us with, with their vision of what to, what's going to happen. So just have a moment of silence and reflection on, on for the meeting tonight. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We put to the roll call for City Council meeting, March 17th, 2014. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Hartquist. Present. Councilor Hirsau. Present. Councilor Kinsey. Present. Councilor Tonta is absent. Councilor Vogel. Present. Councilor Cameron. Here. Councilor Connell. Present. Councilor Cronin. Present. Councilor Eigenman. Here. Council President O'Brien. Here. There's a quorum. Late file items. There are a six, couple. I believe. The yeah, councils will see on their desk a communication number 15 relative to Agave. Uh, communication 16, um, which is followed by uh, communication number 17 on bags, uh, order number 5 uh, with respect to Curzon Mill purchase, ordinance number 7, temporary handicapped parking authorization, communication number 8, mayor's update. Motion to suspend the rules and accept the late file. Okay. Second the order. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Move on to public comment. Ray Nitz. Rainy Bees, I reside at 16 6th Street, but I'm here as the trustee for the Park Association. Uh, we submitted a proposal for uh, financing or help financing the <coughs> existing signage at the, in the industrial park. Um, it's obviously getting very dated and, and old, so we've had bids. I think you all have a, a copy of what we submitted through the mayor's office, and I'd appreciate uh, your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions about what we're, what we're intending to do, what you saw? What's that? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ann Ullman. If you'll pardon me for a moment, I'm going to put on my Red Sox hat. Um, because in your packets tonight, <laughs> you have a, a flyer from us around um, Supporting your hometown team, as many of you know, it has been a horrendous winter for many of our retail restaurants and service providers, some of whom um, are not able to make payroll and have asked for deposits for, um, for work that they've been doing. So it has really, truly a, been a, a really rough winter. Um, so we, uh, the Chamber came up with an idea to do a Support Your Hometown Team uh, initiative on April 4th, 5th, and 6th. So we hope that um, all the city councilors and the mayor and all the uh, folks here tonight will come out and support um, the local merchants, whether they're downtown, Story Ave, Traffic Circle, um, wherever in Newburyport. Um, so get out there and spend some money. Let's infuse some economy. Um, and because uh, Friday, April 4th is home opening day, we will throw out the ceremonial first pitch at 2.05. 
uh, in Market Square, and the mayor will be the recipient. We haven't decided who will throw out the pitch yet, but we'll, I'm sure we'll, Richie Eaton is not available because I believe he'll still be in Florida, so uh, we will, we're coming up for someone else to do that, perhaps maybe somebody from the Newburyport High School softball team or no, baseball team. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on Here's April 5th, Saturday, um, we will be uh, having a visit from Wally, the Green Monster, from direct from Fenway Park, and he will help the mayor plant some flowers in Market Square, as well as take pictures with everyone. And all we ask you to do is wear something uh, Red Sox related to any of our restaurants and retailers and service organizations. A list will be on the Chamber website, and they will be offering a special discount and incentive, maybe peanuts, maybe popcorn, maybe coffee. Um, so we ask you to uh, help us promote that and get the word out April 4th, 5th, and 6th. Thank you, and go Red Sox, go Newburyport. Sarah Robinson. Someone help her with the mic. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah Robinson. I live on Two Board Drive in Newburyport. I attend the Rupert A. Knock Middle School. One day, my dad and I watched a documentary on how plastic bags can affect the environment. It was terrible to see those poor creatures being injured or even killed by plastic bags and seeing the oceans and beaches so polluted. I decided I wanted to do something about it to help preserve Newburyport's beaches and wildlife. So at the end of fifth grade, I made a petition to ban plastic bags in Newburyport. 105 students in the fifth grade signed the petition. The petition states that we, the students of Edward G. Mullen Upper Elementary School, want plastic bags banned from New Report. We believe plastic bags end up in our oceans and can cause a lot of damage to our environment. We want the oceans to be healthy and clear of plastic bags. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren Healy. Hello, members of the council. Lauren Healy, 12 Deer Street. I would like to ask you to support the plastic uh, bag ban you will be voting on in the coming weeks. As my generation continues to confront the issues of climate change, this ordinance prevents, presents one way we can make a difference. Plastic bag produ production alone accounts for 12 million barrels of oil, a non-renewable resource that is quickly diminishing. As solar and wind energy become more prominent, this ban is just another way we can break our dependence on fossil fuels. They also pose a risk to wi uh, wildlife, such as seals, whales, turtles, and fish, who, mis uh, who mistake the bags for food or become entangled. As a coastal community, we should be concerned with maintaining a healthy environment, as it has supported our fishery and tourism industries. But even more, the bags contribute to a greater plastic problem called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Located in the Pacific Ocean, it consists of millions of pounds of plastic waste and is estimated to be as big as uh, twice the size of Texas or even as big as the United States. The waste can also wa wash up on the land. Hawaii, for example, is plagued by plastic waste. Thousands of birds are found dead on their shorelines because their stomachs contain only plastic. What if the ocean currents chained and Newburyport was bomb bombarded with the waste? The ban only encompasses thin single-use plastic bags, which would make the transition easy for citizens. We are already an eco-minded community with a rail trail, windmill, bike paths, and a farmer's market. This ban will provide the motivation citizens need to make the beneficial switch from plastic to reusable bags. Finally, I'd like, like to thank the counselors who already support this ordinance. I believe it is important to help teach the upcoming generations one way to steer away from fossil fuel dependence and protect the health of our um, marine ecosystems. Um, additionally, we have a petition uh, from 100, with 150 signatures on it uh, from the students of Newburyport High School. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Caroline Link. Um, I, think, I thought I had, if it's okay, my name is Janine Benelica, and I was hoping to just introduce these, this group, if that's okay. okay go ahead. Um, <clears throat> my micromanaging didn't work. I thought I had put my name first. But anyway, my name is Janine Brunell-Looker. 
Um, I am the name that has been uh, most, uh, most readily and publicly used in association with the plastic bag ban ordinance and the Citizens for Sustainable Bagging, so it seemed appropriate that I should show my face. Um, but I also uh, wanted to reassure you that I am not a one-woman show. Um, it has maybe appeared that way. There are many, many people who have worked uh, diligently and what we believe is honestly and extensively and thoroughly on um, working with our community on researching uh, the, the, the issues involved in attempting to move a community away from plastic bags. We hold those values as individuals and as a group. We also want to express our gratitude to Barry Connell and all of the co-sponsors and all of you for taking this uh, into your hands. We give it to you with a certain amount of relief, but certainly a tremendous amount of respect for all of you and for the process of our local government. With us are some kids from River Valley Charter School. They've been working on this project for almost as long as I have. So some of them I've known since preschool. It hasn't been that long that we've been thinking about plastic bags. It's been um, two years. They have practice presenting their case. So they have, though there are five of them, they will take only three minutes and 58 seconds of your time. Um, I think there was one other thing I wanted to say, but I've forgotten it. So I'm going to hand it over to these people, they'll introduce themselves individually and then present. Hi, I'm Caroline Link and I live at 13 Walnut Street. Uh, I'm Karen Dunn and I live at 52 Ormond Street. I'm Julia Tiernan and I live at 8 Mark on Main. I'm Claire Mayer and I live at 15 Mark on Main. I'm Cindy Todd and I live at 43 Hanover Street. So we are the students from the River Valley Charter School in New Britain. Since October of 2012, we've been researching the use, distribution, and destruction of plastic bags in the United States. We would like to share with you some of what we've learned and the work we've done to build awareness of plastic pollution in our community. Uh, it is estimated that 500 billion to 1 trillion plastic bags are consumed each year worldwide, and this works out to be over 1 million plastic bags per minute. <coughs> The United States alone uses 380 billion plastic bags in one year, and it takes 12 million barrels of oil to make these bags. And each resident of the United States uses approximately 1,200 plastic bags per year, and only one to 2% of all these bags are recycled. The others are, end up in our landfills, our rivers, and our oceans. And the United Nations Environment Program estimates that there are 46,000 pieces of plastic litter floating in every square mile of the ocean. A million seabirds and a hundred thousand animals, such as whales, dolphins, turtles, and seals, die from plastic bags and other waste each year. They die from being entangled in, suffocated, or by ingesting plastics. Once the bags find their way to our oceans, they break down into microplastics that displace the food supply of animals. It is estimated that plastic particles outweigh plankton by six to one. Animals then eat them because they look like food. Once plastics get into the water, there is no known way to remove them. To stop these poisoning, to stop poisoning these animals, we have to stop plastics from getting into the water in the first place. Starting in San Francisco, cities all over the U.S. have been working to place bans, fees, or taxes on plastic bags. In Massachusetts, Nantucket, Brookline, Great Barrington, and Manchester by the Sea have banned plastic bags, and several other cities are working towards implementing similar ordinances, including Cambridge and Somerville. We are certain that a ban in New Brickport would have a significant impact on the amount of plastic pollution produced by our city. By breaking down the EPA's estimate of single-use plastic bags in the U.S. by population, we have been able to determine that Newburyport itself uses more than 4 million plastic bags per year. If we can change that, that's 4 million bags that won't end up in landfills or in oceans or in us. We have felt that it is our responsibility to take immediate action starting in our own community. Since the fall of last year, we have conversed and strategized with boards such as the Exchange Club of Newburyport and the Newburyport Chamber, Chamber of Commerce about ways to launch a campaign to ban plastic bags. We have also worked with other students in Newburyport to distribute a student-made survey <coughs> pertaining to the use of plastic bags to over 100 small businesses in the area. More than half of the small businesses in Newburyport have expressed their support of banning or placing a fee on plastic bags in our city. We understand that banning plastic bags in Newburyport will place a burden and challenge on grocery stores and large chain stores. Some work has been done to help alleviate this problem, including the introduction of the My Eco program. This program redirects money saved on plastic bags to area schools and nonprofits. Shaw's in New Rayport has already signed on to this program, and work has been done to involve other larger stores. 
We invite you to join us in our efforts to lower the usage of plastic bags in Newburyport by supporting this proposed ban. We may not able to be able to change the world, but together we can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Oh, sweet. Elizabeth Valeriani. <coughs> My name is Elizabeth Valeriani. I live at 29 Oak Street, and I'm uh, Vice President of the Emma Andrews Association. And I'm also on the Emma L. Andrews Library and Community Center Commission. There is a mouthful. And I've been going to the Emma Andrews Library since I was three, which you can tell is a very long time ago. <laughs> and I have to say that thanks to Mayor Donna Holliday, things have really changed in that library. Um, for example, we have an event coming up a week from Saturday that spotlights the great improvement and the great problem that we now have. We have a fundraiser coming up for our summer programs. <coughs> we run Wednesday afternoon programs for five or six weeks in the summer, depending on what we have to cancel, for children. And they're very appealing programs, they're very worthwhile. We invite the police department, the fire department, and Molly and Morris recycling people to come and talk to the children and we have other purely fun things that we offer in the summer. And to support that, we do what we call Super Saturday, Hot Soup for Cool Summer Programs. It's very popular, the building fills, people have a wonderful time with their friends, we raise money for the program. The problem is that there is a large percentage of our community that cannot even get into the building to enjoy either the program or the soup. And of course, I'm talking about the ramp. So you know it would be the handicapped community. We would be very grateful if you could see fit to fund the ramp and handicap accessibility project there. Because we are very committed to opening our collection and our events to everybody in the report and the surrounding towns. And having the ramp would allow handicapped people to get into the building and take advantage of what we offer. And my friend Donna Cohn is going to come after me and explain some of the events that we, um, through the Emma Association, are offering to the community. What we do is staff everything, the library component and the community center component. And we also do the fundraising, which includes things like the Super Saturday and other things to raise money to buy everything from the books to the scrubbing bubbles that it takes to run the library and a community center. And thank you for your past support, especially to Mayor Holiday and Peter and Mike Bartlett, who handles the building. Donna Conway. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Donna Conway. I live at 27 Marlborough Street. I am the event coordinator at the ML Andrews Library. I am also on the uh, commission for the city. Just want to let you know some of the uh, programs that we offer. We have chair yoga every week, and about 10 to 12 people attend. We have a knitting that's going on right now, about eight people. We have a book club that meets once a month that 12 people attend. We have a tween program that is attended about, uh, that's every other week, every other Saturday, and about six um, to eight uh, people, uh, tweens, attend that. We have uh, story hours, uh, four to five story hours every week, with a total of 50 children attending each week. And we do, we have to prepare crafts for those events, plus crafts for the summer programs that we run. So our volunteers are very busy making between 15 and 1,800 crafts for all of those uh, programs. We also have a local author that comes. Uh, we have uh, you know, our local authors once a month, and about you know, 20 to 30 people attend those. We, ha we host the Newburyport High School's Poetry Slam team. We have them come before they head off for the state uh, champions championship meets. Um, we also, uh, in the last couple of years, have hosted and participated with Trails and Sales. We've had two uh, events with that. 
We also, with uh, Preservation Week last year, one of our volunteers uh, did a living history presentation of uh, Emma L. Andrews, which was really good. We have two brownie troops, two daisy troops, and uh, a wolf den that met, and that was a total of 60 children that meet at the library per month. So there are other events that if we could, uh, you know, get the handicap ramp, we could host some other events for uh, people in town. So thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for coming. Ever can we the last name, 34 Winter Street? Sorry. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everett Chandler, 34 Winter Street. Thank you. I'm here tonight with the um, topic of energy aggregation. Uh, I would like to say that I still, well, I still have some reservations regarding the automatic enrollment or the opt-out nature of the program. Uh, a lot of my concerns were addressed in the committee meeting earlier, and uh, I think that at this time the continued investigation of the uh, of the program is warranted. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you, Suzanne Gallagher. Hi, I'm Suzanne Gallagher. I am up for a temporary appointment to the Board of Registrars, and I'm here if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Michael Desette. Good <coughs> evening, Councilors. I'm Michael Desette, 44 Jefferson Street. I'm here as the Vice Chair of the Community Preservation Committee and the Acting Chair of the Open Space Committee, uh, asking your support for a two items on your agenda and commenting on one other. Uh, the uh, support is for a late file that is the preservation of an excess of 10 acres on Curzon Mill Road. That is an opportunity that is before us and we need to seize and it is time sensitive since it uh, must be closed by the end of the fiscal year in order to preserve the opportunity for significant matching funding from the, uh, from the state. Um, as uh, a member of the Open Space Committee, I'd like to also report that that committee uh, wholeheartedly recommends the acquisition of this land for uh, protection. And finally, I noticed that you have two reappointments for the Community Preservation Committee, Linda Smiley and Jane Healy, and I ask your support for those two individuals as well. Thank you. Okay. Jenny Dunahue. Good evening, counselors. A um, couple of things. Uh, Jenny Donahue, 18 Cherry Street, chair of the Disability Commission. Um, one of the things I am here to support, um, obviously, would be the Emma Andrews request for, um, for monies to install a long, long overdue handicap accessible ramp. Um, to just reiterate what the ladies already said, um, they do wonderful work. They offer lots of wonderful programs, and if they could be that much more inclusive, it would really make a difference to the community of folks with disabilities. Um, so please, please support that transfer. Um, secondly, there's another transfer for the Parks Department, which part of it is going to um, a handicap accessible swing at the Brown School, which also would allow that playground to become much more inclusive than it currently is. Um, it just didn't quite make it into the budget when the park was um, initially put in, but it's very much needed and I strongly urge you to support that transfer as well. Um, and then I also wanted to just quickly touch on the plastic bag initiative that is before all of you um, and commend the youth for a wonderful initiative they've, they've brought before you. Um, but I wanted to raise one concern that I have coming from the community with disabilities. Um, if bags are removed from the retailers that are the plastic bags with handles, there needs to be some sort of clause that is going to assure folks who do not have the full function of their hand that there's going to be a bag available to them with a handle. So for instance, if you're at Market Basket and all they're offering is their paper bags, they don't have handles on them. So <coughs> there needs to be some kind of safeguard put in place to make sure that whatever bags are being offered in the plastic bag stead has a handle. So that being said, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to another chance to sign up? 
Come right here. What's your name, address? Hi, um, sorry. Um, my name is Leah Petty. I live at 10 Tink Street. And sorry, I'm really nervous. Um, I'm just, I'd like to just say, um, freshman year history class, I learned um, the first thing we did was discuss why we learn history. And one of the reasons was so that bad things don't repeat themselves. And this past unit, we, in junior year, we're learning about um, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, um, that, yeah, I know, sorry. What other nervous thing you are? We have to do this all. And how pretty much that was just a horrible, horrible natural disaster that was caused because of humans' way of farming. And I can just see that this is, I mean, I can't tell the future. And, but the facts are here that something, that this is building up and this is just, the plastic is just really, really getting out of hand. And we really need to just look at the future and realize that we are smart species, we are a smart species and we have the ability to look back at our past mistakes. And if we're not gonna do anything with that history, then I don't really know why we should learn it. <laughs> um, Bring that up. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Anyone else got nerve up to speak now? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. That's the end of the public comment. One more. One more. Okay. Uh, John Giordano, 7 North Atkinson Street. Um, this is the first city council meeting I've ever attended. I came to support the, um, the citizens in Newburyport who have worked really hard for two years on this uh, plastic bag ban. Um, they have stated, I think, a really compelling case for why we should ban bags. Um, I, th I remember my uh, grandfather told me that when they used to change the oil in their cars, they used to dump it in the backyard. We would never do that today because we have learned the consequences. Um, sometimes education requires difficult measures, and this is one. It's, democracy requires sacrifice, and this is a case where we have to, we have to move ahead by <clears throat> being willing to recognize that, um, that convenience is not always at our fingertips. That's our gift to the people of the future, the future citizenry, the future voting citizenry has spoken. And I hope you'll um, you'll hear them today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy. Hi, my name is Fiona Hill. I live on 79 Federal Street, and um, I'm here as part of the Plastic Bag Initiative. And as Lauren was saying, um, as was saying about the uh, plastic bag, or I mean, supporting the coastal community is very good for our tourism and economy. Um, there was a recent article about a whale, well, several whales actually, that had been ingesting so many amounts of plastic, uh, a large amount of it being plastic bags that had been dropped into the ocean, um, that it had died and washed up on the shore. And as a new report community, we pride ourselves on whale watching, and that brings a lot of tourists, well, I don't know what percentages, but it brings a good amount of uh, tourists into New Report. Like, I've had a lot of cousins who have been being like, oh my god, I can't wait to go to New Report. I always wanted to see whales. Like, my Spanish exchange student, I always wanted to see whales. I can't wait to come to New Report just to do that. So, if we have all these whales ingesting plastic and dying, like, I, it wasn't close to New Report, but there's whales here, there's plastic bags here. They, uh, as Lauren touched on that giant plastic thing that's drifting in the ocean, the whales could ingest that. So um, just when you think about voting, maybe think about that point. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, it's Abby Moore, 10 Riverview Drive. Um, two things. One is plastic bags take a thousand years to biodegrade. They never like truly do, but um, additionally, I think that this ban would be really beneficial to the community because as high schoolers, we know that we're lazy, as a, and as a species, we know that we're lazy. And 
I think that the community could use the push of the plastic bag ban because I, as one, take it upon myself to use the plastic ban bagging. Sorry. <laughs> and um, but I think that the rest of the community could <coughs> use the push. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hearing or seeing nothing, or good, that is the end. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for those excellent views. Yeah. And now we'll move on to Mayor's comment. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, President O'Brien, members of the City Council. It is a pleasure to be here with you again to uh, give you a brief update on uh, what's been happening with our administration. But first, I, I have to commend all of these students who are here. Uh, tonight to advocate for the ordinance to ban plastic bags. When they first reached out to me um, almost a year ago, and you know, it really struck me that a group of students would come together and be um, so concerned um, about their future and said, this is our future that we want to impact and make a change. And I'm so proud of them and all of the research and their work and the efforts of members of uh, Sustainable Bagging came together, the Citizens for St Sustainable Bagging, to support uh, the efforts of the students. Uh, they brought me to the high school to participate in a panel and showed me this video, Bag It. And if you haven't seen it, before you review this ordinance, I strongly encourage you to watch this video. It's, it's really quite remarkable in terms of the information that's in there about the damage that these single-use bags do to our environment and uh, our community. So uh, again, thank you students for uh, all your efforts and coming together to speak before the city council tonight. I know for some of you it was a challenge, but you'll get better at it, I assure you. Mm. Uh, I also wanted to and, thank, and, uh, I'm sorry. And now it's time, they should go home and do their homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to stick around. Have to do, that is true, because this is going to committee, it's going to be a, a process, and that we will be sure that you are aware of when the subcommittee of the city council will be reviewing this. Which subcommittee will be reviewing this, too? License and permits. We're not sure yet. They don't know yet, but we'll be sure that it's posted and that you have the information and that you can participate in the subcommittee meetings. So you certainly, or you can stay and watch the meeting if you'd like. But we're welcome to. One question before we leave. We have two petitions. Who should we leave them with? Where the clerk. The clerk. City clerk. <laughs> Thank you, students. Oh, thank you. Didn't want to stick around all night. <laughs> so, moving on to a few other points, I wanted to thank all of you who attended the uh, NRA planning and. Uh, City Council meeting uh, on, on March 8th. Uh, I thought it was a very valuable use of our time together as um, a City Council, <coughs> the City and the um, members of the NRA as we were able to, I think, respectfully present each findings, concerns, and we have more work to do. And uh, I had been in touch with Andy Port from our planning office and suggested that our, our next meeting would be more of an open community meeting where we would sit together at t round tables with members of the community, members of the Citizens for an Open Waterfront, the City Council, uh, and we would do charrettes. We would find that common ground and we would find where um, there is support on one side or the other and how we can get closer to the middle to finally move this forward. Obviously, the events of this current week, you knew that one member was not seeking reappointment, but we received two resignations this week, and uh, this creates significant challenges as we move forward. I think I had mentioned in my update to you last night that our meeting with legal, Copeland and Page, <coughs> to sort of figure out next steps, was this week, it's actually next week. Uh, so certainly we'll update you as soon as we have more information about 
um, dissolving, close out, home rule petitions, reappointments, but um, I'm sure at this juncture that we will need to appoint three members in terms of moving forward because we don't even have a quorum and there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the new survey maps in terms of uh, conveyances of land to the Waterfront Trust and uh, changes in the NRA map. We need I to leave the door open. Who has to be open? It's open too, meeting? It's too hot. It's too yeah, just ask them to leave, go down the hallway, appreciate it, we're running the meeting here. So, uh, I will update you as soon as I have more information. I'm certainly open to entertaining your recommendations for appointments for these three vacant seats for the Newburyport Redevelopment Authority. Uh, in addition, I had mentioned to you that I had attended the Waterfront Trust meeting and I thought that that was a, again, a very productive meeting as we move forward, finally having accurate boundaries meets monuments of the current boundaries for the NRA and the Waterfront Trust land, so we need to move forward with that. Uh, since your last meeting, we also had a quite a turnout at City Hall with coaches, families, sports. We had probably had over 200 students there uh, working in support of our application to the CPC for the um, renovation of the Newburyport High School field, putting in turf and expanding that field for multi-purposes. And uh, as you've heard me say several times and during my uh, State of the City that the need for field space is that critical uh, portion here. Uh, master planning has kicked off well. We had a wonderful turnout, I think, for the first meeting. Uh, a little smaller uh, this past week where we were talking about uh, priorities and visioning. The 10 groups are set and the chairs have been given their sort of marching orders, if you will, in terms of what they need to accomplish over the next many months as they begin uh, developing either new statements under sustainability and education, which are new to the master planning, or to update the other eight areas. So these are going to be public open meetings. They will be published on uh, the calendar, and all results, minutes, agendas will be on the master plan website. So please uh, keep in touch with what's going on there. We are uh, in the heart of budget review. Both uh, the school budgets are being developed. Back-to-back meeting, back meetings with department heads reviewing our city's FY15 budget. Um, unfortunately, with the I'm sure most of you learned that we, the Senate and the House approved an additional 125 million dollars in uh, local aid. Unfortunately, that's still not going to be a tremendous help to us. Uh, at at this juncture, we're still. Um, going to see a um, only a net increase in about $61,000, um, which is very disappointing. We still are waiting to hear what's going to happen with the circuit breaker and uh, special education funding, as well as charter school funding, because there has been some conversations about that. And maybe there'll be some additional, as there has been the past two years, per pupil additional <coughs> allocation to Chapter 70 funding, because we certainly need it. The In your... Um, additional capital budget request for this year. There is request for feasibility study for the Brown School. Uh, we've talked about this and uh, I think there's been an additional update when uh, Councillor Eigerman, myself, uh, Andy Port, uh, Peter Lombardi and Youth Services were all together at a meeting with the community at the Brown School and we really need to move forward on this. In order for adaptive reuse, we need a comprehensive assessment of the HVAC, electrical, heating systems, windows, you know, energy, and also potentially what are the financially feasible uh, additional adaptive reuses for this building. We know our goal is to transfer and move youth services there, but what is the appropriate uses for the remainder of the first floor, second and third floor that will be accepted by the community? I think in the update I talked to you about a couple of concerns about the community, the building not being vacant too long, maintaining the playground, the open space, and uh, also ensuring that their property values around the, the site are retained. Uh, the Kelly School, we will be moving forward fairly quickly with uh, in the next few weeks uh, once the preservation restriction on the facade of that building is secure. Uh, we have to complete a series of votes in terms of declaring that building surplus and then that building will go up for sale. We have no other choice with that. Um, you heard Mike Desette talking about the Curzon Mill Road property, which was a late file for you tonight. Um, again, this is a very important 
property, two pieces of property on Curzon Mill next to one that we have previously <coughs> protected. This is an area across from Mosley that we definitely, as a community, do not want to see <coughs> developed. And the fact that DCR is very interested in this property and will cost share this with us, I think is important. Uh, water and sewer building, I know that there were issues raised about that. Uh, I know that uh, the business manager has presented you with some additional information, which hopefully will answer your questions there. And unless you have further questions for me, I will say good night. And yes. One quick question. With the uh, Curzon Mill, um, will we own the property or will the state own the property? It's a state, right? Yeah. DCR will own it? The, uh, the city will own the fee, the underlying fee, and a conservation restriction will be held by the state. Okay. okay. Very good. Any other questions? Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Have a great meeting. Move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda this, uh, consists this evening of the approval of the minutes for the February 24th, 2014 meeting. There are 11 communications in the uh, consent. First is Great Bay Auto Body. That's a renewal of a secondhand motor vehicle license. That's in for approval. Second is the new report representative to Whittier Vogue Tech. Uh, that's uh, Brett Murphy. That's uh, to be received and filed as notification. Central Congregational Church 11th Annual Chocolate Tour to be held May 17, 2014. That is now changed to approval at the request of Councilor Cronin. The fourth is the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, the new report share, which I believe is 5,900. And that is uh, changed to approval at the request of Councilor Cronin. Fifth is the block party at Cherry Hill Soccer Field parking lot to be held May 31st, 2014. That's to be referred to license and permits. Sixth is the Story Avenue sign declutter letter uh, by Jim McCarthy. That's uh, going to public safety. Seventh is the New Report Retirement Board cost of living adjustment meeting to be held April 24th, 2014. It's received and file. Eighth is the DEP written determination positive one for Merrimack Ale House at 40 Merrimack Street, receive and file. Ninth is the Coastal Trails Coalition Slow Bike Race to be held July 30th, 2014. Request of Councilor Cronin, that's changed to approval. Tenth is the renewal of the outdoor seating for Purple Onion uh, on In Street, that's uh, in for approval. And last is the Chamber of Commerce Support Your Hometown Team that we heard from uh, the president. That's not received and filed. There are five appointments. Um, there are two first reading of appointments as opposed to reappointments. First is Peter J. Finnegan, 3 Noble Street as a special police officer. Second is Christopher Michael Keary, 25 Temple Street to the Commission on Disabilities. Next are reappointments. Jane Healy, 38 Winter Street to the CPC until March 1st, 2017. Linda Smiley, 7 Atwood Street, to the same committee until April 1st, 2017. And last is Dr. Robin Blair, 18 Market Street, to the Board of Health until March 31st, 2017. And that, as amended, is the consent agenda. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Oh, sir. Justin. I, I would just ask to remove um, item number eight, which is the DEP written determination. To approve? Oh. Hmm? Just to pull up. Uh, pull remove. Up. For now, anyway. Where are we going to put it? It's communications. Regular agenda. I'll move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? First transfer is <clears throat> for $409,676 to sidewalk repairs. Would you like me to read all these, Mr. President? Be happy to. You read them all last time? Uh, this is the first time it's come in. Okay. So, um, yes. 105,000, hazardous tree removal, 9,000, storage area network device, 20,000, color copier scanner, 4,800, mowers, 7,500, landscape trailers, 9,500, 
Oil pump system, $15,000. City Hall carpet replacement, $18,196. Defibrillators, $9,800. Emma Andrews ramp, $10,755. Library roof repairs, $1,500. Twin fire engines, $115,000. Business and industrial park signage, $11,810. Brown School reuse feasibility study, $40,000. Parks Equipment Repair Upgrade, 17,525. Ackers and Common Improvements, 13,576. Motion to refer to Budget and Finance. Second. Thank you, Mr. President and fellow counselors. Um, when I first saw this, it was a little bit taken aback to see a large set of transfers like this for nearly half a million dollars or for $400,000. And in further conversation with the uh, to the mayor's office and with Peter. Um, it's amazing to me how well we've done with our free cash and how the free cash really has grown. And when you look at this amount of expenditures against the balance in the free cash, I think that this is a, uh, bodes well. And I know that through the budget and finance uh, committee will look at it strongly and look at it pointedly. Um, but it's nice to see this directed spending. Thank you. So to the budget and finance, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We'll go on to communications. Number eight. Can you read it all? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a written determination pursuant to <laughs> Chapter 91, Waterways, on the Merrimack Ale House, 40 Merrimack Street. Um, it says, in pertinent part, to declare its intent to approve the referenced application subject to the attached conditions that go on for quite Mo a bit. Motion will approve. Second. The reason I uh, took this out of uh, consent was the, this is obviously a uh, very large document of 12 pages. And when I just did a cursory review of it, um, something was pointed out to me by one of my constituents that um, kind of jumped out at me as well. If you go to the top of page 11, um, the math doesn't add up. So it jumped out at me as, is there anything else on here that really needs review? Um, before this goes in, it says that, uh, just for the people at home or in the audience, it says the amount of tide water displaced by the work here by authorized has been uh, ascertained by the department and compensation thereof has been made by said Merrimack Valley Air House by paying the treasury of the Commonwealth $2 for every cubic yard so, so displaced being the amount hereby assessed to the department, 450 cubic yards for a total of $4,500. If you do the math, it's $900, unless there's something else hidden in here that is not reflected. Um, I'm not advocating for the alehouse. I'm just trying to figure out what this actually says, since it uh, is obviously it not the new math. Hmm? New math. Could be the new math. <laughs> There's a lot of that going around. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Mr. Port. Thank you, Andy Port, Director of Planning and Development. Um, I've been in conversations with Ben Lynch, uh, who's the, uh, the gentleman who's prepared those documents. Generally speaking, um, the content of that letter is basically template driven. Uh, the purpose of that notice is to start the 20-day appeal period uh, for if someone, if someone is interested in appealing the uh, license that would there uh, in the 23rd of this month come out to Joe Leon for the Merrimack Hill House. So, um, it, it, and you, just as a quick summary, that particular provision, there may be a little bit of error in that. You can probably see from the rest of the document, it's a little bit of a cut and paste. Uh, the purpose of that was to give the general form of what the license will look like, uh, but the final license will have corrected those issues, I know, from having the conversation with Ben Lynch. So it is new math. Hmm. Thank you. Director Christian to Andy. Um, just asking again what you said. So this, this sets the stage for a 20-day appeal of this document? 
Yeah, this is the notice that starts that clock. If there's no appeal received, the license is then issued. Uh, I think that expires on the 23rd, I think. Okay, so a cut and paste a document that clearly or seems to have some type of mathematical error in it. Yeah. It's out there, the, and to that you're supposed to appeal or not? I just would like to understand. Well, this sub, I, would, I would argue, I guess, in, in knowing their, generally speaking, their regulations, I would say the substance of the license is captured elsewhere in that document. For instance, the public improvements that are required, um, public access on both sides of the building, uh, the bathrooms being open to the public, certain signage and things like that, uh, recognizing public access across the site. Those are really the substantive uh, issues that are addressed by the license. Um, that is more or less a formality that, um, that con that I certainly will talk to Ben Lynch. I'll have a conversation about that particular provision. But the substance of the notice is really captured elsewhere in the license where it pertains to the public benefit that's, uh, that's received directly on the site. OK. I continue, if you wish. Thank you. Council <laughs> Fonnell, I'd hand up first. Yeah, a, a quick question, Mr. Port. Um, are there elements of the, the um, um, uh, the public benefits associated with this uh, that the city is going to take issue with? Is the city going to uh, support this license? Is it going to remain silent on it? Is it going to appeal it or ask for a, uh, <coughs> a reconfiguration of some sort? Sure. That's my first question. I have a second comment. Sure. Uh, there's no plan right now to appeal that uh, or take uh, issue with it. The planning board, the zoning board of appeals, all the local permits have been issued for it. Um, and actually, the improvements that are required as part of this license that you see referenced in different spots in there are actually a result of those permitting processes and negotiations with the Waterfront Trust uh, to place the, the access on the Waterfront Trust side as well as on the, the alley side, the other side. All right, so the city is satisfied with the conditions that are contained here? Yes, it's consistent with uh, the local approvals, which actually happened first. Right. And, and just a comment, I'm not sure, and Mr. Councilor Cronin, um, I don't know if, if this was a misstatement or, or if you intended to make this an approval. Uh, I thought this might more appropriately be a receiving file since there's no action that's truly required. This is just a notice. I apologize. It's supposed to be received and filed, but I just want to make sure that we're receiving and filing a document that reflects uh, an accurate portrayal of what's Agreed. going on. Agreed. Thank you. What's argument? <clears throat> um, uh, just to point out that the uh, Tidelands displacement fee may actually go up because if you look on page two, finding number two, what the finding is that actually there's 14,071 square feet of filled Tidelands and there's no record uh, at the Commonwealth that there was any permission to do that. So actually, I, I think probably what Ben Lynch is likely to do is increase the fee to $28,000. But um, I, I, I I, I think we should be careful. I mean, this is our opportunity to comment uh, to the DEP if we have an issue with it. Uh, certainly, Councilor Cronin found an, a glaring error. Um, I don't think we, it would necessarily have to be an appeal, which would slow up Mr. Leone, and I don't think anyone has any interest in doing that at this point. I didn't hear that from the planning director. But there's no harm, I don't, I don't think, in, in sending a, an email or a letter to Mr. Lynch and, and asking him to please clarify in the license what the fee will be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could direct a question to Planning Director. Um, as I'm looking at this in detail, I guess more tonight than over the weekend, um, I guess two questions. Number one is, as I'm looking at special condition number one, it states that, uh, just reading, uh, the licensee shall construct and maintain in good repair two publicly accessible walkways. The licensee shall construct and maintain, including seasonal removal of snow, a five foot clear wide walkway on the western side. And then the next sentence says the walkway on the eastern side shall be constructed in accordance with special condition two. My question is regarding um, snow removal. Um, seasonal removal of snow, that parentheses, it seems, is for the western walkway, and I'm wondering if I should assume it also is for the eastern walkway. That's true. That's correct. And I believe, I don't, although I don't have the agreement in front of me, I believe mm -hmm. that the Waterfront Trust Agreement uh, establishes maintenance requirements for Mr. Leone, uh, uh, even at a local level, okay. as well on top of that. Great. And, and also, just because this is the first time the city council is seeing this, I, I am grateful to the various permitting boards who I know have vetted this for many months. Just for my own understanding, because um, I don't see it 
referenced in any of these special conditions. Parking, mm -hmm. where would people park? Parking for the facility, for the, uh, for the business? For either employees and or, and or patrons. Sure. Uh, in this case, it's a local uh, zoning issue, actually, that uh, okay. I think you're, you're getting at. And it's, uh, it was actually one that was debated during the permitting process. Uh, as currently uh, written in the zoning ordinance, Mr. Leone's project was eligible to use municipal parking within the buffer of that project, 300 feet. And so if you look at the Waterfront Trust lot, the Green Street lot, and even the NRA lots uh, under management of the city, um, he was eligible to take advantage of those spaces um, for the proposed use. So there's enough spaces within there to provide for the facility. Um, there is one matter that uh, will be coming to you, uh, I, I suspect, in the near future, and that is the question of some handicap spaces. Um, uh, Mr. Leone had proposed to put some handicap spaces, negotiating, uh, of course, through the city council that, and uh, that was left in his court to, uh, to follow up on that. So I suspect that now that uh, this license has come to, to him from the state that he would then pursue the, a couple of miscellaneous things, one of which is that. That would be great. Thank you. Sure. I just have one last question. Thank you. Is it, um, is, is it this, would this be considered then normal that such a document would come with sort of loose ends and I, I, you, you live in this world. I now. myself would not issue, uh, you know, with uh, with that many, uh, you know, typos and whatnot. But I think, uh, generally speaking, it, like I said, it's a ty it's a uh, template-driven document. That the purpose there is to give the general scope of what is in there. For instance, I would describe it as similar to the zoning no uh, ads we put in the paper for a zoning hearing. The zoning uh, notice that we give in the paper to let the public know when we're having a hearing on a zoning change does not need to contain the entire text of it, only a sufficient summary of the contents of it. So uh, enough, of course, to save us the money of not having to print an entire zoning ordinance if we do that uh, in our rewrite. So um, it's similar to that in, in the essence that you have to notify what the general content is. You'll actually see somewhere else in the document there was reference to it being in generally the, the same form in the final license. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. The motion is to file. receive file. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's a DCR purchase announcement in pertinent part. It states uh, it's addressed to uh, Thomas F. O'Brien, President of Report City Council. In accordance with provisions of 301 CMR 51, would like to inform you the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting to its Department of Conservation and Recreation has under consideration the acquisition of 10.7 acres plus or minus or other property interest in the city of Newburyport. The property was used as open space. If acquired by the Commonwealth, the land shall be used as open space. The property is located in the city of Newburyport and there is a locus map included. There's also one other paragraph I feel I should read. Should DCR decide to pursue this acquisition, it may be necessary to complete the transaction in less than 120 day notice period otherwise required. We therefore ask that you agree to this reduction in time, indicate your approval in, of the reduction on the waiver form enclosed herewith, and return it to DCR in the enclosed envelope. The certificate of announcement reads, um, again reciting uh, 301 CMR, that um, the City Council hereby certifies that on blank date, I presume this date, public announcement was made at a regularly scheduled City Council meeting of the Commonwealth's interest in acquiring approximately 10.7 acres of land or other property interest in the City of New Report. A locus map marked Exhibit A is attached. And if that was voted on tonight, then there'd be two items the City Council President would sign, certificate of announcement that I guess the clerk has read that, and a 120-day waiver form, it seems to me. Point of order. So th these would be resolutions adopted by the council to authorize our, our president? Or, or a simple motion to approve both. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to refer to planning and development. Is that not? Uh, well, can we take, well, he needs a second to debate it. Second. Uh, I'll tell I believe in this case, unlike the transfer request we got for the sum of 400000 we, we're under a very tight time schedule on this one, and we're going to lose the ability for, the D, for DCR to kick in their 400000 mm -hmm. So I don't know necessarily whether the, the council would want to refer it. We could probably debate it right here. Um, I, I have to say, unlike many of the transfer requests, um, this is a pretty cut and dried transaction, 10 acres. There are photographs. But we're, many of us will be familiar with the land. So I personally would think that we, we should be able to debate this on the floor tonight and move it forward. Why? 
because I want the DCR money. Anyone wish to make a motion? Well, there's a motion on one, the floor. One motion on the floor. Is, to, is it to planning and development? Hmm? Uh, well, second. Well, was. Was. Um, if I could rise, Mr. President, I, I guess I'm confused by something. Um, perhaps if someone more learned can help me understand this. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Am I led to believe that other individuals or boards in the community have already vetted through this? Is that correct? Or is it, or is the city council the, the first uh, uh, officials or boards or whatnot to see this document? Uh, no, we've received a copy of that letter. Um, and I, I think we would uh, agree with council argument as far as the action the council uh, would take this evening on it. Uh, you'll see the one of the late file communications relative to the Curzon Mill acquisition. Um, these are related items. Um, and perhaps some explanation from that from our, our senior project manager, Jordan Vining, might help. This does go hand in hand yeah. with with the uh, with the order, um, the draft order in there for this acquisition. The 120-day notice. I used before coming to work for Newburyport 13 odd years ago. I worked for the state um, parks agency. The 120-day um, waiver notice waiver request is actually a fairly standard item when the, when the uh, the state's working with, with communities and trying to protect land. In this case, we're uh, we're trying, as I think one of the councilors alluded to, to secure uh, several hundred thousand dollars of state funding. To, uh, to protect this land. And that, that funding has to be accessed by the end of this fiscal year, by, uh, by June. And the 120 days, if that played out, then that would, uh, procedurally, that would prevent, prevent us from moving forward with the acquisition. So the, there's been several public meetings um, over the past few months with Open Space Committee, with the Community Preservation Committee, and um, this, is, this is part of the, um, the 2012 open space and recreation plan. It's one of the specified areas that we should be looking to protect. It's called out specifically. So there's, there's actually been a fair amount of public input and public focus on this, both um, in, in the past couple of years as well as in the past few months. So the, um, the order is coming before you, which um, will will likely go to committee in terms of uh, some some further discussion but the uh, the general request is to move as quickly as possible on these various items and with something procedural like this our request would be that you would approve the uh, the waiver of 120 20 day notice and um, we could we could move forward with uh, the rest of the process Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Jordy, so the, in essence, the um, order is the stopgap, if you will, in terms of, of our commitment to this item, if that, yeah, if that might help. Certainly. Thank you. So, so given the fact the planning department has already uh, vetted through this and is approving this, I'll withdraw my motion to refer. Uh, I, I guess my question for Jordy uh, uh, Vining is. A second. Thank you. Oh, is, is how much time do you really have? I mean, if, if there is time for it to go to committee, I have no, I have no interest in railroading it through. I just, I'm just concerned about the end of the fiscal year. So, so tell us exactly, if you could, do we have time to send this committee? Um, there's no exact time frame. There are a number of different steps which have to, has to be gone through to, to see this acquisition forward. Certainly, as Bruce alluded to, the, um, the actual order for the City Council and, and the approval of the CPC recommendation for funding is the main element of that. We have many other steps to go through in terms of, of drafting and negotiating and executing purchase and sale agreements to capture the uh, verbal agreements that exist, uh, conducting title examination, uh, negotiating conservation restrictions with the various parties involved, working with the attorneys on all the closing documents. All of these things take, take time. 
and we don't want to be caught in a rush in June to uh, be dealing with all of these all of these various issues. With um, I think there are there is going to be plenty of, of opportunity for discussion of this project separate from this 120 day notice period. I really personally see this as a as a as a cut and dried procedural question. The um, there is already a, a strong basis for the city to proceed in terms of the, the open space plan and the CPC recommendation, the open space committee's recommendation. It's, it's not something that's coming out of nowhere. So, um, so the council obviously should do whatever it feels is right in terms of this procedural question, but our request is to approve it so we can move forward with all these other issues. Mr. Herzog. Thank you, Mr. President. Just for the record, um, I'm all set with Mr. Vining. Um, just for the record, the City Council right now is being asked two things. Number one, to approve a certificate of announcement, which the clerk just announced a moment ago. And number two, we are being asked to approve a 120-day waiver form, which Mr. Vining just tells me more than 120 days have already been uh, uh, dealt with from various uh, city entities. So. Um, the, so with that said, I, I have, I have no, no objection to uh, approving these two items right now. So I, again, withdraw my motion to refer. So moved. Second. The motion is to? Uh, to approve. Second. Approve both of them. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Good. Communication 13. Communication 13, uh, motion to um, table communication 13 and 14 collectively. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Fifteen. Fifteen. Communication fifteen. Communication fifteen is a um, outdoor seating application by um, Agave um, for seating first. and uh, alcohol. Second. Second. Dustin. Is that approved? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Carries. 16. Communication 16. Communication 16 um, is a um, letter from Mayor Holliday to present members of City Council relative to the City Council order involving revolving funds. Uh, it goes on for page Motion and to refer to budget and finance. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Communication 17. 17 is a uh, letter to the uh, president and members of city council from the Massachusetts Food Association. Motion to receive and file. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 18. Communication 18. Communication 18 is the um, mayor's update letter. Motion to receive and file. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move on to our appointment. First appointment. The first appointment is uh, Suzanne F. Gallagher, 3 Garnet Street. Uh, that would be as a temporary board of registrars. Motion to suspend the rules and approve in one reading. Second. Second. I should recuse myself. Mm -hmm. I can talk about her. <laughs> Any discussion? Um, just, just that um, this is a time timely issue. I was uh, asked by the uh, the the clerk that. Um, we 
um, fast track this appointment as apparently there are some meetings coming up that uh, she would be in attendance at. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilor Junta. Yes. Councilor Harquist has recused herself. Councilor Hirsog. Yes. Councilor Kinsey. Yes. Councilor Tontar has absent. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Argerman. Yes. Councilor O'Brien. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Shall I? Wait a minute. Sure. <laughs> <coughs> I hope you aren't listening. Sorry, hold on. Ready, Council Hawkins? You ready? Sure. You ready? Yeah. Okay, very good. Appointment second reading. Catherine uh, D. Prefs, 6 H Street, Commission on Diversity and Tolerance until February 1st, 2017. That's an appointment. Two reappointments. William K. Todd, 8 Foster Court, Historical Commission, January 1st, 2017. Uh, Patty M. Smalding, uh, 5 Britcher Street to the Highland Cemetery Commission until February 1st, 2017. Motion to approve collectively. Back in the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Junta. Yes. Council Harquist. Yes. Council Hearsaw. Yes. Council Kinsey. Yes. Council Tontar. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Cameron. Yes. Council Connell. Yes. Council Cronin. Yes. Council Ragaman. Yes. Council O'Brien. Yes. Move on to orders. Order number one. Order number one is uh, as follows. City Council of the City of New Report pursuant to MGL 4453E and a half annually authorizes the following revolving funds, and it lists all of them. Uh, and furthermore, it's, it is their primary duty and responsibility of the City of New Report to approve the city budget and provide general fiduciary oversight. Now, therefore, be it ordered that any expenditure greater than 7,500 shall be approved by a majority vote of the New Report City Council. Motion to refer to budget and finance. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Going to order number two. Resolution, whereas New Report citizens are served every day by public servants in federal, state, county, and local government, these unsung heroes do their work that keep our government alive and working. Whereas public servants throughout the city, including teachers, nurses, laborers, librarians, public safety officers, computer technicians, healthcare professionals, and many other occupations, these employees provide the services demanded by citizens with efficiency and integrity. Whereas without these public servants, con continuity of government would be impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Whereas Public Service Recognition Week has been celebrated the first week of May every year since 1985 in accordance with an annual designation by the President and Congress. Throughout the country, mayors, governors, communities, and public service organizations participate by issuing proclamations, hosting award ceremonies, and special tribute events, and delivering messages about the value of public service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the New Report City Council proclaims May 1st through the 10th 2014 as Public Service Recognition Week. We encourage the people to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of government employees at all levels, federal, state, county, and city. Further, because of our 250th anniversary this year, we suggest <coughs> sesterquincennial <laughs> organizers incorporate appropriate events during this week. I don't know if I did that correctly. <laughs> I may need help on that. <laughs> Councilors, Herzog and Junta. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. My apologies in advance to the city clerk. Uh, I, I didn't want to say 250th twice in the same paragraph. It seems redundant. So uh, I, actually, I looked that up, and Sesta Sesta Centennial is every 250 years. Um, centennial being, uh, you know, 100, and I guess Sesta is 25. I don't know. Um, this is a uh, 
This is an, a, a resolution which I've uh, always sponsored since uh, my election, and I know that past councillors uh, prior to my joining the council have sponsored this in the past. I do thank Councillor Junta for joining me in the sponsorship this year. Uh, and um, you know, this is an annual, uh, an annual event that happens across the country in uh, multiple communities and multiple states. Uh, uh, typically, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts always has a, uh, their own recognition week as well, and um, sometimes they even do it for the entire month. So, um, and again, I do, I do point out the last paragraph. Uh, I do, um, I figure there's enough time between now and the first week of May that if uh, any uh, departments or any um, uh, you know, individuals or whoever might be uh, doing something or interested in doing something for the 250th, Perhaps there's something could be done that can help recognize um, all uh, government officials. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was happy to co-sponsor this with uh, Councillor Herzog. Um, many of you may know, may not. My both my mother has worked for city government for uh, about 20 years, and my father is a retiree from state government of 35 years. So. Um, living in a house where both my parents were public servants, I know what it takes to work for government. It's not always an easy job, so I think a week of recognition is a very good thing. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move on to order number three. At the City Council of the City of Newburyport, having viewed the CPC's recommendation for the transfer of remaining unspent funds from the Herrick and the Guterres open space acquisitions totaling $356,765.98 from the CPC fund balance account 70-35900 to open space reserves account 70-32410 sponsored Councilor Edward C. Cannon. Motion to refer to budget and finance. Second. Yes. Th thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, we have a regular council meeting in two weeks, so I think we, we can uh, deal with this before that time uh, so we can act on it. Um, we certainly want to give the Community Preservation uh, Committee enough time to, to know uh, where, where this money would be reallocated. Um, because these um, original appropriations were done before my time, I don't recall exactly how much w was coming from uh, for each of these purchases, so I think we could just vet it quickly in committee over the next couple of weeks and not slow down the CPC process. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no. <coughs> Order number four. Resolution, whereas Earth Hour is both an international and local symbolic event organized by World Wildlife Fund to raise awareness about climate change energy efficiency, and natural resource conservation. And whereas Earth Hour asks all citizens, businesses, non-commercial establishments, and government agencies to turn off all non-essential lighting for one hour beginning at 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 29, 2014, and aims to encourage citizens and businesses to commit to actions that they can take in the coming year to conserve energy. And whereas the City of New Report is working to further the aforementioned mission, aforementioned mission through energy conservation, energy efficiency, and conversion to greener energy sources. Now, therefore, the city, uh, New Report City Council encourages all non-essential lighting in city buildings and public landmarks to be turned off from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 29, 2014, and encourages our citizens to do likewise in order to conserve energy and raise awareness about global climate change. Councilors Cameron and Kinsey. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we've passed this uh, in the past. Uh, count, uh, former Councillor uh, Kathleen O'Connor Ives and I have sponsored this in the, in the past, and Councillor Kinsey is sponsoring it with me um, this year. It's really come from, uh, from a constituent, Sheila Tainter, who's here uh, tonight that we've passed this, and I appreciate her uh, bringing to our attention and to the community's attention um, the issues associated with climate change. Um, I, I know uh, we've had a very cold winter and things are a lot different uh, you know, year to year. Um, but you know, overwhelmingly across, uh, across the planet, 
aside what's happened to us in the United States and in the, uh, in the North American continent this year, I mean, global warming is an undeniable fact. Um, the causes of that probably are still argued uh, from, from various points of view, but uh, certainly conservation uh, should appeal to us, whatever, whatever our leanings. Um, this is voluntary, and we do reach out to the mayor's office to see if we can uh, save some money on the city side, and it's a great thing for, for people in the community to do as well. So uh, I'd appreciate your consideration. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Moving to order number five. That's the late file order um, authorizing the acquisition of property on Curzon Mill Road in the city of Newburyport. It goes on for um, a page and a half. Uh, the first paragraph, whereas the land located on Curzon Mill Road identified as map lot 1057A and 7B consisting of 5.22 acres and 5 acres respectively, respectively, has been identified for protection as open space and conservation land in the city's 2012 open space and recreation plan. Zon, would you like me to read the entire thing? I, nothing more pleasant than my voice to me, but I doubt <laughs> to others. I don't want to put people to sleep. So. Well, I'll move to refer to budget and finance. Is that? Second. Why not? <laughs> And planning and development? Mm. Which committees? Both? Um, I'm on them both, so it's very convenient for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I know in the past CPC orders typically go to both, so I'll say both. There's no CPC. Is the second still valid? Yep. Any discussion? For budget, finance, and Sense, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hmm. Oh, right. It is. Ordinance 1. Section 13, 168, parking restricted on certain streets. <coughs> no person shall park any vehicle on the following streets or portions of streets as indicated below. Franklin Street. Extent no parking westerly side only of Franklin Street from the property line between 10 Franklin Street and 6 Franklin Street and running in a northerly direction to Water Street. Submitted Council Allison Harquist. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council Junta. Yes. Council Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirsar. Yes. Councilor Kinsey. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Argeman. Yes. Councilor O'Brien. Yes. Section 13, 168, parking restricted on certain streets. No person shall park any vehicle on the following streets or portions thereof. Fair Street, to the extent no parking for a distance of six feet on the northerly side of the exit of the from the Sullivan Building parking lot, exit from the Sullivan Building parking lot at the corner of Temple and Fair Streets on the westerly side of the street. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council Junta. Yes. Councilor Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirsog. Yes. Councilor Kinsey. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Argument. Yes. Councilor <coughs> Ryan. Yes. Ordinance three. Section 13 180, resident parking, add G2 by adding the following streets or portions thereof to zone 2, Fair Street between Water Street and Liberty Street. Motion to approve. Second. Motion. Council Junta. Yes. Council Harquist. Yes. Council Hirsau. Yes. Council Kinsey. Yes. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Cameron. Yes. Council Connell. Yes. Council Cronin. Yes. Council Ragaman. Yes. Council President O'Brien. Yes. On its four. Chapter 4, Boats, Stocks, and Waterways, Article 2, Harbor, Use Regulations Generally, Section 4-72, Definition. 
following words, terms, or phrases when used shall have the meanings as described to them in this section, except where the context clearly indicates a different meaning. Add, stand up paddleboard shall mean a surfboard-like device used while standing and propelled with a paddle or oar. Submitted, Councilor Cronin. Um, motion or move to public safety. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Same boat stocks, Division 4 use regulations, Subdivision B, operation of vessels in Newburyport Harbor, Section 4 80, windsurfing and water skiing. Delete the same. Insert a new A, which states windsurfers, water skiers, and stand up paddle boards are not Motion to. refer to um, public safety. <laughs> Second. With his nautical background, I think it would be most appropriate for Councillor Cronin to perhaps demonstrate the use of one of these <laughs> paddle boards before we take a final vote on this in a few weeks. On the water. <coughs> oh, I, no, I think the discussion's over. Oh. <laughs> Did you get a second? Aye. 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 Chapter 6.5, Environment, insert a new Article 3 to Chapter 6.5 of the New Report Code entitled Plastic Bags, yeah, and it goes on for several... Three pages. Three pages, but it is sponsored by Councillors Connell, Cameron, Cronin, Argumen, Hirsog, Tontar, and Vogel. Let them read it, then. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve, uh, to, excuse me, <laughs> a motion to refer to Neighborhood and City Services and License and Permits. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. President? Yes. Is it possible we could have a committee with the ho of a whole? Possible to have anything. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my suggestion. Motion to amend. Um, hmm. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the appropriate measure to modify the it's previous action of the council? My, it's so much cleaner to withdraw it and then just make it a motion to refer to Neighborhood City Services, License and Permits, and Committee of the Whole. So moved. Second. So that's I, I assume everyone has withdrawn, which would be? I'll withdraw. Thank then. you. So now you have to make a motion. Is there a vote on the withdrawal? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks for the clerk. Is that, is that all one? Yes. Five and seven? Uh, here we go. Uh, I might. He's still covering me. Um, this is a late file ordinance seven, chapter 13, traffic and motor vehicles. Uh, again, it goes on for a page and a half. In short, it um, uh, in, in empowers, if I can use that word, the city clerk uh, to do certain uh, measures with temporary handicap parking. Motion to refer to public safety. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now, here we go. Is that it? I think so. reports. That's what I do. I'm going to find it. Mr. President, on behalf of our uh, chair, uh, Charles Tontar, who was enjoying a Red Sox game earlier this afternoon down in Florida, um, we, we'd like to uh, remove from committee um, item number one, <laughs> city That's clerk right. contract. I think that's right. I'll be outside if you need me. <laughs> would, you want, would you like me to stay? We'll, we'll talk about you. Go ahead. Okay. Turn <laughs> Make sure you mute your <laughs> notes. Um, uh, motion, to, motion to approve. My contract. Second. A second to remove from committee. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay. So second to approve. Was by second. Okay. Discussion. 
So it's been removed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. No. Uh, mo motion to approve? Yes, we've done that. Yes, we have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when he's gone, I don't it's know. just we need a city clerk, know. <laughs> you know? Okay. This clerk is wet. Uh, so we met um, as a committee on the 10th, uh, myself, Councillor Cronin, and Councillor Tontar, uh, with the city clerk and also uh, the, the mayor's director of policy and administration. Um, we made some changes, which you have the corrected version um, <coughs> in your packet. And again, um, just kind of reiterating the background on this, uh, we've, the, the city clerk reports to the city council, um, most specifically to the city council president. That, that's always been the practice um, and is established in, in, in charter and ordinance. Um, but uh, the position has never had a, any sort of employment agreement or a contract. Um, and so, you know, over, you know, recent time, you know, it was realized one should be drawn up. So um, th this contract uh, mirrors language from contracts of department heads. Uh, many, many of them, um, I, all of them really, I think, have, have some sort of a contract. Um, th there's no salary change to this. It, it just makes explicit what the current compensation is. Um, and there is factored in a 2% cost of living uh, per the schedule that's included. Um, in the draft that you see, um, and, and I, I think um, those of us who've been on the council for a while know, and, and newcomers probably have realized, um, the clerk's duties were significantly enhanced uh, three, four years ago when the paid parking program was implemented. So there's uh, an additional salary of $21,000 a year that um, goes on with that. And that really, we have multiple part-time employees for the paid parking program, uh, those are all um, at a limited number of hours um, that are non-benefited and that helps cover weekends um, and, and, and holidays and, uh, and, and busy times in the summer. Uh, so this position is uh, frequently called in on weekends um, dealing with various issues uh, and, and you know, we've discussed that various times over the, over the past uh, couple of years. So. Um, the changes we did make, we, we changed the dates. Um, originally it was January 31st. Uh, we changed that to April 15th. Um, that would allow, it, it's a three-year contract, so it's not contiguous with council terms. Um, so, so it is somewhat staggered. So um, this would start on April 15th. It would go to April of 2017. Um, then there would, there would be an election, uh, you know, then presumably the, the, the position would uh, start another three-year term if, if reappointed or if a new person uh, went into the position. So every, every two, you know, two cycles of the city clerk's position, it, it would line up with, with the city council elections. Um, but generally, um, you know, this person will go for three years and we obviously each have two-year terms. Uh, but we thought April was better. Um, we did, uh, there, there's a piece in here, um, section 1C, uh, number 1C, about non-reappointment um, in, in terms of uh, uh, the city council would notify the clerk uh, if they were not to be reappointed. Um, we, we did some cleaning up in the essential functions around uh, being the keeper of financial records as opposed to maintaining financial records. Um, you know, request for time off. Uh, we had a discussion around that and that, you know, if, if this person needed to go attend conferences, uh, probably should be some sort of notification uh, to the city council president. Generally, that has not been an issue, but, you know, perhaps would be in, at some future time. Um, and the, the benefits uh, pretty much line up with uh, what they currently are. There's nothing in addition to uh, that. There is no, uh, no longevity. And um, I, think, I think that's, that's it. Councilor Cronin may remember a few more things than I do, but. Any questions? Any who, who typed this? <laughs> the city the clerk, I don't know. Assistant <laughs> clerk? <laughs> Deputy, check the zeros. Deputy probably. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know if he knows how to spell Mosley. He's our city clerk and he's the head of the registrar. I hope he has the right street addresses. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have a phone most of so. Other than that, no problem. Probably most of you don't either, so I guess what the heck. <laughs> no, no.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We're going to. Uh, I, 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 is it over? I didn't hear a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we adjourned. We didn't actually need you for the rest of the meeting. Let the, let the record reflect. I said thank you, please. You're excused. You have a it's close vote, so. Uh, no, I don't. Um, is it off? I don't know. Are you? No, I never muted myself. Oh, okay. Plain <clears throat> education. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I'm going to give you a quick update on uh, our meetings. First, it's MCAS week. So if you see kids fritzing out downtown, giving some pause. At least Mullen School begins. I'm not sure about knocking the high school. Um, Joint Ed continues to make a top priority understanding how the school budget's reported. And I, it's my understanding that uh, we had a school committee meeting tonight coinciding with this meeting, and the mayor uh, touched on that at her meeting with the school committee. So we'll get an update as to that at our next Joint Ed meeting. The school calendar for 2014 and 15 has been voted and approved by the school committee. But um, 2015 and 16, it was discussed, but it's not been voted on yet. They're going to hold that vote for a later date. School buildings, again, the projects remain on time. There's going to be a future date coming to City Council and School Committee for a tour. That's forthcoming. Uh, Superintendent Ricardo is going to plan that. Uh, the Bresnahan School Leadership Model, if you're not um, up to speed on that, 800 plus students a ranging in three to nine years old. 800 plus, it's a lot of students. Um, there's been discussion about the number of principals there, but with 800 students ranging from three to nine years old, we're going to have two principals. Um, and an assistant principal. The skill set is very different when you're dealing with three and four and five years old compared to the upper being um, the first and third grade. Um, and the new superintendent advisory um, committee has begun to meet quarterly. It's a group of 50 plus members and it's including parents <coughs> and students. And action plans are going to be drawn from those meetings. Um, and then finally, Superintendent Vercaro presented her entry plan to the school committee last month and the plan is going to uh, serve as a tool for the eventuality of her strategic plan, which is forthcoming. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. License and permits. Um, motion to remove item number one, Shannar Limousine. Second. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Uh, uh, to, vote to remove it first. All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Also. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, license and permits was waiting for their um, bond renewal. We did receive it. All the paperwork is in order, and um, I urge your approval. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? No, Mr. President. Thank you. Neighborhood and City Services? Nothing this time, Mr. President. Planning and Development? Nothing to report. Public Safety? Uh, motion to remove item one. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? This is a seemingly, thank you, Mr. President. This is seemingly a new uh, event. It seems to be rather uh, low key, and it's uh, the only real impact it's going to have on uh, the streets of Newburyport is uh, crossing in the downtown uh, to the other side of Merrimack Street. Other than that, it's going to be on the uh, rail trail and Harbor Walk, and this was um, approved by the police department, and I'd Urge your approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Anything else? Um, usually don't do this, but uh, a very brief update. Um, I'm the representative of the uh, Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, uh, and um, some of you may have things going on in your ward, so I just wanted to give you a, a, a very quick update. Um, we have been trying to work diligently on Low Street, basically for the entire distance. Um, we are still trying uh, to get speed limit signage that was before the council almost a year ago. Uh, we're moving in that direction, albeit 
very slowly. Um, the uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission is going to be doing an analysis of the uh, hospital entrance at Bashaw Way. Uh, there was also some citizen input, especially from uh, Low Street residents up near Story Ave um, about sidewalks in that area, um, traffic calming, traffic concerns. Uh, this is we are looking at we are looking at a myriad of things that can be done there. Obviously, money is a paramount issue. Uh, we're also looking at truck traffic um, on Route One. From, uh, from, I'm sorry, on Low Street, from Route 1 to the Hill Street Extension, Parker Street area. Um, we've gotten feedback from the industrial park. They're, uh, they're fine with it. And uh, we're going to be working with the state on that. Uh, what we're trying to do is just reroute everybody off Low Street and enter the industrial park down the way on uh, Hill Street Extension, Parker Street. Uh, also, we're going to be working on just the timing issues of the light at Route 1. Um, something that has been talked about tonight is the alehouse, uh, where uh, the, one of the conditions of the alehouse is um, uh, mitigation for pedestrian and bicycle, um, in particular, in the area of Green Street and Merrimack Street. So uh, it's on their dime, not ours. Uh, so we are working to, uh, with the planning office, with the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, on what we can do with that. Um, jumping over to Turkey Hill Road, uh, we are working with Mass Highway. Uh, planning Director um, Andy Port has been um, pivotable, pivotable, pivotal. yes, it's easy for you to say, um, in the Whittier Street Bridge project that we're going to try to get some signage out there for truck routes, directing people away from 95 at Story Ave and moving them to 95 at Scotland Road. Uh, the issues we have are one, uh, long haul truckers are looking at their GPS and going the shortest route, which is bringing them down Turkey Hill. Uh, so we're, we're trying to erect signage on the highways and on 113, to avoid that. The second thing is we can't just put a truck route out there because that truck route goes to another community and they have to sign off on it. Um, I talked to you about speed surveys and then we're also looking at um, potential crosswalk down near the Salvation Army in Ward 2, uh, moving stop signs um, and looking at the uh, Greenleaf Corridor from State Street to um, uh, right behind the Mall looking at um, um, some potential, and don't everybody shoot me on this one, um, some additional winter parking bans in congested areas, particularly in Ward 1, 2, and 3. This would not be done, yeah, th <laughs> yeah this would not be done without um, a full, full vetting of it. The issue we have been told is fire um, is having trouble getting down some of the streets, um, garbage, um, recycling, school buses. And of course, if we do do this, this will certainly ensure that we have no snow next winter. So we have <laughs> plenty of time to do this, but this isn't going to be something that's done um, in a back room. This is going to be done. Um, um, with full understanding with everybody in the neighborhood. And if, if one street doesn't want to buy in, I have no problem with that. I think it's going to be on a street-by-street -street basis. But that's kind of a quick overview of what's going on. Thank you. Up to utilities. Um, yeah, motion to uh, remove from committee uh, electrical aggregation uh, order. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to approve. Is that a second? Second. Discussion? Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the the, um, the uh, Public Utilities Committee met earlier tonight on uh, March 17th. Um, before I continue, just to refresh everyone's minds, 
This is an order that was sent to the Council uh, Central Committee back on February 10th, which um, speaks to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 164, Section 134, um, whereby by approving this, the Council uh, uh, the, on behalf of the city, one, declares its intent to become an aggregator of electric power on behalf of its residential and business communities, and two, will negotiate and enter into a contract for power supply independently. Uh, and if such a contract is executed, individual consumers would retain the option not to participate and to choose any alternative they desire or take any other action. All that is in the order if we, we approve this tonight. The committee met earlier tonight. Um, some other counselors were, were in attendance as well. And, um, and um, we met with, uh, with Peter Lombardi, with uh, Molly Ettenborough, with Mike Strauss, and uh, also we met with um, Brian Murphy, the president of, and Mark Capadonna, also with the Colonial Power Group, both of whom are in this room if anyone has any questions. I'll mention Colonial Power in a moment. The, the brief background, Mr. President, is the um, municipal electricity aggregation, the program that's been underway and been happening in communities across the Commonwealth for, uh, well, many years. And um, the, it, it basically happened when the uh, electricity industry was deregulated. Uh, there's a number of state statutes that govern this aggregation program, and the State Department of Public Utilities is in charge of regulation. So um, everything which is before us, essentially, is, has been before other communities in the state and um, many of those communities have already passed it, have already, uh, their, their councils or their town committees have already approved this. Um, Colonial Power Group has been retained by the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, and um, uh, many cities and towns across the Commonwealth have already opted into this. Most of them are in, in western Massachusetts. Additionally, all of Cape Cod is part of this, and uh, the most, uh, the most uh, proximate community to New Report is Lowell. Lowell uh, adopted this last fall. Uh, um, the first uh, uh, communication after the MVPC vetted, vetted uh, Colonial Power Group, uh, city officials began having conversations last November with uh, Colonial. And um, essentially what would, what would happen if we approve this tonight is uh, the city would then enter into a contract with Colonial Power Group uh, to determine the, uh, the, the fine details. Uh, the mayor's office would, would work with the Colonial to determine the fine details, and then ultimately DPU would need to approve that, because again, DPU is a regulatory body. Um, all uh, ratepayers in the community, whether they be uh, uh, homeowners or business owners, any ratepayer under National Grid today would receive a letter on city stationery with a, uh, you know, that it would come from the city. It wouldn't be coming from Colonial or any other entity. And uh, we, of course, would have a full, um, the city would have full uh, authority to what actually gets put on that letter so a resident or a business owner understands the content of that letter. And the content of the letter would essentially say that there is a, uh, a new uh, uh, aggregation program in the community. You are being automatically opted into this but you can remove yourself at any point at no cost to you, and there would be explanation of how you can remove yourself. Unfortunately, um, I and others have asked the question, well, can we have a program that's not an automatic opt-in, or not an automatic opt-out? Can people actually opt into it? Uh, the answer is no, because that's a state statute that governs how ratepayers get into it in the first place. Um, but, um, Many councillors may have in front of them a, 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 a copy of a PowerPoint presentation which Colonial distributed during the, uh, the uh, committee meeting. And um, the key pieces I'd like to point out to you is that um, um, we can choose as a, ultimately the city can choose how uh, the terms of this contract. Um, for instance, uh, we can choose how long the contract should be. Should it be six months? Should it be a year? Should it be three years? And Colonial has worked with communities in the state that have done all of that, from six months all the way up to three years. 
Um, uh, additionally, uh, I'll add that I, uh, I, um, I know that the Energy Advisory Committee uh, uh, generally agrees with the concept of this because um, the city, that is city buildings, have a, uh, have a, a contract with Constellation Energy, which again provides um, discounted rates beyond what National Grid provides. And what, if we move forward with this, every ratepayer in the city, every homeowner, every business owner would receive savings. Might be small savings, you know, maybe $2, $10 every month that you'd save, but it would be savings. And by, um, by aggregating all the ratepayers into one program together, it would be significant savings citywide. Um, additionally, I'll add that um, there would be no, uh, there'd be no impact to the, uh, to the uh, tax rate. No tax dollars would be used. This would be a complete uh, uh, private program. Colonial is, um, uh, get, Colonial gets paid, if you will, from the, uh, from the program itself. And, um, and uh, additionally, the rate payers would continue to receive their, their monthly bills directly from National Grid, just as it happens today. So there wouldn't be any new bills coming in. There wouldn't be any new, you know, from, from addresses on your envelopes. Um, and with that, I guess I'll conclude my rant. Um, I, the the uh, committee uh, approved this by a vote of three to zero, uh, and we do recommend the council to approve this. Um, if anyone has any questions for I, I don't know if Councillor Vogel or Eigenman have anything to add that I haven't mentioned. And additionally, we do have representatives from Colonial uh, in the room tonight. Thank you. Sure. Discussion, Councillor Vogel. The one piece, that, thank you, Mr. President. The one piece that I would add is that essentially we're setting Colonial up to be our advocate. They speak for us the community to the utilities. They help put together the um, agreements with the community and so on and so forth. They're there as our representatives. And the question I asked was, how do you get paid? And that's really all built in to the bid that comes back from the utilities or um, from the, essentially from the, the, um, the brokers. They go out and they buy the power at the, on the market. And in that bid is the cost at pennies, if I'm not mistaken, where are you? Oh, yeah, to, to Colonial. So essentially it's a, it's a no-brainer and could work clearly to uh, lessen our, our cost. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah, uh, just a, a question um, to the chairman. <coughs> I, I'm, I, I think this is a terrific thing moving forward. I think the concept is sound and I think I support it. Uh, but as folks often say, devils are in the details. And here's my frame of reference. In the 1980s, uh, a number of municipal utilities were created under the guise of the Mass Municipal Wholesale Electric Corporation. And they uh, essentially bought into purchase power agreements that have locked their communities in for many years, 20, 30 years, depending on the community, that became some of the most expensive power in Massachusetts because of the particular purchase power agreements that, that they entered into. So I'm wondering <coughs> what the specific language of the opt-out um, Lang, uh, provisions may be, um, and, and I guess that is, uh, it might to understand that this is still subject to negotiation, or is there standard language that would be recommended and that communities generally adopt? Sure, if, uh, if I could maybe yield to the Brian or Mark from Colonial to respond to that. Thank you, uh, Brian Murphy with Colonial Power Group. Mm -hmm. uh, there is standard opt-out language that has been approved by the Department of Public Utilities Consumer Division. It's been adopted by, in, in, with various minor tweaks, by all the communities, including the Cape Light Compact, that have adopted these programs. Uh, so it is, in, in some respect, fairly boilerplate. Uh, and, and that's one of the key differences, is that anybody can opt out at any time. Unlike a municipal utility that has essentially a, uh, a captive audience that can't get mm -hmm. out of those long-term PPAs that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I would like to reiterate that any plan that, as your agent, we are charged with crafting has to come back before this, this body for approval. Okay, so we don't just get you know, the permission and, and then we go off and do our thing. We have to bring it before you uh, so that you get a Good. chance to, to read it. And it, you know, it should be open to public review as well. Good, then I'll reserve my comments to that time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, if I could ask uh, 
Ms. Edinburgh, how, how long is our agreement with Constellation? Because if, if I understood the testimony we heard in committee earlier this evening, uh, the city itself would not participate because we're already under contract to Constellation. <coughs> so Molly Edinburgh, Energy and Recycling Coordinator, our Constellation contract ends May 2015. And right now we're paying seven cents a KW, which is significantly under what the base rate is at National Grid. Mm. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else, Council? No, it's not. Thank you. Go to the order. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned. So I was going to call public's attention to your socks, but I thought. Mm. For the good of the order. <laughs>